Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Eckelbarger. Once again, here is the Pepsodent Show starring Bob Hope. This is episode number 232, and it originally aired on September 19th, 1944. Here now is Bob Hope and his special guest, Quentin Reynolds. The Bob Hope Show with Jerry Colonna, Vera Vague, the songs of Francis Langford, music by Skinny Edison and his orchestra, and starring Bob Hope. <laughs> How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob Camp Borden, Canada Hope. <laughs> this is my second trip up here, by the way. I visited Canada once before and stayed a long time, but it finally blew over. And I think... <laughs> and I think... <laughs> a gag is blowing over, too, but I... <laughs> and I think the natural beauties of Canada are wonderful, but they won't give me their phone numbers. <laughs> I called up a girl I used to know here in Canada. She was from the timber country, but she's married now and has three little splinters. <laughs> we came up here by train. Boy, it was really crowded. One soldier was doing his morning exercises, and when he exhaled, four people got off at the wrong station. <laughs> and boy, was that train slow. A couple of newlyweds got on to Chicago, and when they reached Niagara Falls, their son carried the bags to the hotel. <laughs> Falls. You all know what Niagara Falls is. That's a natural phenomenon where tons and tons of water pour down in a steady stream. We have the same thing in California, only we call it February. <laughs> oh, say, uh, Skinny Ennis didn't have a passport, so I sneaked him across the border in my suitcase. I guess I forgot to put air holes in it. When I opened it, a moth was giving him artificial respiration. <laughs> I was really thrilled when I finally got across the border. I stood there proudly and said, Greetings, Sister Republic. And some Canadian private said, Greetings to you too, Sister. <laughs> and what a reception I got here. When I got off the train, the crowd raised me to their shoulders and prayed it for two blocks right down the main street. But I'd like to catch the guy that let him past all those low awnings. <laughs> Here's Skinny Ennis singing a number from Dare Bingle's latest picture, Swinging on the Stars. Swing it, skin, boy. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moving, comb in a jar, and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a mule? A mule is an animal with long, funny ears, kicks up at anything he hears. His brain is brawny and his brain is weak. He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak. And by the way, if you hate to go to school, you may grow up to be a mule. Or would you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar, and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a pig? A pig is an animal with dirt on his face. Shoes are a terrible disgrace. He's got no manners when he eats his food. He's fat and lazy and extremely rude. But if you don't care about the whole thing, you may grow up to be a pig. rather be a fish. A fish won't do anything but swim in a brook. He can't write his name or read a book. And to fool the people is his only thought. And though he's slippery, he still gets caught. But then if that sort of life is what you want, you may grow up to be a fish. And all the monkeys on in the zoo. Every day you meet quite a few. So you see, it's all up to you. You could be better than you are. Could be swinging on a star. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. That 
was skinny and a swinging. They're singing. Yes. <laughs> singing, swinging on a star. With well, those Toronto Terrors behind yes, you, huh? Too. Hello, man. That's great going, Skin. Tell me, how do you like it up here in Canada? I like it fine, Bob. You know, I've been going around shaking hands with all these Canadians and telling them I'm their ally. Skin, you shouldn't do that. Up to now, they thought we were winning the war. <laughs> You know, you'll scare these people and the Canadian Mounties will get you. Canadian Mounties? Yeah, you know, the FBI on horseback. <laughs> yeah, Francis Langston. Hello, Francis. Steve, is it nice being up here to... Yeah, Francis, you know, I was invited up here by government officials when I arrived... Two big cars were ready, and one of them rushed me right from the train to the governor's office. Well, what about the other car? Well, that rushed the governor from his office to the train. <laughs> well, Bob, now that we're up here in this northern country, you should buy a top coat. Why, Francis, I managed to keep warm. I know, Bob, but it looks a little ridiculous, sewing pockets on an old hot water bottle. <laughs> Well, it's a little damp around the waist, I guess. Well, you could take some lessons from these Canadian men. You think I could, huh? Uh-huh. Listen, Francis, I want to warn you, by the way, there are a lot of wolves here in Canada. <laughs> say that again, Bob. Why should I say it again? Well, I think it's so cute the way your pointed ears wiggle when you say it. <laughs> Professor Colonna around, Bob. Well, I'm expecting a call any minute. <laughs> hello? 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 Colonna talking. Colonna, where are you? I'm at Niagara Falls, and I got a wonderful view from my hotel window. Really? What can you see? Other windows. Stop that nonsense, Colonna. What are you doing over there? I'll let you in on a little secret, Hope. I'm going over Niagara Falls in a barrel. Professor, why in a barrel? Somebody stole my pants. <laughs> no kidding, Hope. I'm really getting ready to go over the falls in a barrel. Nope. Got a better idea. <laughs> Say, what's that gurgle, gurgle, gurgle? I just decided to go over the falls with a barrel in me. <laughs> Professor... Professor, I think the trip has probably been too much for you. Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> What's the matter? It tickles. <laughs> Professor, Professor, why have you got all those cobwebs on your brain? Maids, day off. <laughs> What's your alibi? Yeah. <laughs> You're getting very corny, old boy. Association, old man. Association. <laughs> well, here I go. I'm ready to go over the falls, Hope. I'll swim out to my battle. Are you really in the water, Colonna? Of course I am, Hope. Right now I'm making with a mermaid. Shoot the scale to me, frail. <laughs> He's dead. I'd better not go near her. Why not? She's got a Mickey in her fin. <laughs> Keep your mind on the job. I thought you were going over the falls. I am. Hope I'm in the battle now. I have to I'm at the edge of the falls now. I'm going over. I'm quarter way down. Now I'm halfway down. Colonna, what happened? Customs officer, gotta show my passport. <laughs>
Professor Francis, the professor got up on the wrong side of his brain this morning. Well, did you enjoy the sightseeing tour we took around the falls, Bob? Yeah, you know, Francis, there's a cave right behind Niagara Falls. The whole front of it is covered by falling water, and when you're in there, nobody can see you from the shore. Yes, but it's so damp, Bob. Don't you think you should move to a hotel? <laughs> yeah, but look at the money I save doing my own laundry. <laughs> Say, Bob, is... <laughs> As we were leaving, did you notice those newlyweds who checked into the hotel for a honeymoon? Yeah, Francis, I'm afraid that wasn't a happy marriage. Why do you say that? Mr. Anthony was carrying their luggage. <laughs> hey, but can you imagine that Professor Colonna? Still in Niagara Falls. What a nerve he's got. If he doesn't hurry up and get her, I'm going to tear up his contract. <laughs> Lucky I made the traffic light in Hamilton. <laughs> Say, Hope, uh, remember that native girl I brought here from the South Seas? You know, the one I brought with me to the program last week. Yes. <laughs> Habit forming, isn't she? <laughs> uh, honey, uh, you remember Bob Hope? Oh, Casanova? <laughs> Casanova? Well, how do you like that? Well, you think I've got what it takes, huh? Oh, yes. On my island, we make love by rubbing noses. <laughs> Careful, Hope. We're on our way to Niagara Falls to get mad at it. Oh, so you go for the Professor Bumser, huh? Oh, yes. Professor Colonna, he man of my dreams. Uh, Colonna's the man of your dreams. You must sleep on a lumpy mattress. Say, uh... <laughs> where, uh... Say, where does this little cutie come from, Professor? Oh, west of here, Hope. Saskatchewan? Thank you, Pops. Saskatchewan. <laughs> I got mine. Catch one for yourself. <laughs> Tell me, how come you're so half-baked? Short second in the incubator. <laughs> but tell me, Bumstead, why do you want to marry the professor? Oh, he keeps me and makes fireworks in my head. He makes fireworks? So I colonia, you're wonderful. What's your secret? Keep my cigar in my mouth. <laughs> oh, Professor, you are so cute. And you have not kissed your little bones today. Kiss me. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'll show her what kind of a friend I am to you, Colonna. I'll kiss her for you. Oh, you'll kiss her for me. Eh? That's right, Colonna. Oh! What else can you do with that kind of a tourist? Here's Francis with a Langford version of it could have happened to you. Hide your heart from sight Lock your dreams at night It could happen to you Don't tell stars how you might stumble Church bells ring It could happen to you All I did was wonder How your arms would be And it happened to
a good friend of mine we're very happy to have with us tonight, that world traveler, famous war correspondent and author, Quentin Reynolds. Thanks, boys. Really, Bob, I don't know yet why you invited me to appear on your program. I'll skip that, Quentin, because I don't enjoy fighting with my guests. That is, not the men. Seriously, I'm very glad. I'm very glad to be here, Bob. I love your program. Listening to it keeps me thin. (laughs) Laughing, huh? Oh, no, Bob. Bending over to turn it down between musical numbers. I thought we'd been having more music than your waistline looks like. (laughs) This is like old times, isn't it, Bob? Sure is. Remember when we met in London in that blackout? I sure do. What about it? Nothing. Just give me back my watch. (laughs) I can't. I put it in my pocket and some thief poured acid on my suspenders and stole my pants. Those blackouts were really something, weren't they, Bob? To say nothing of that London fog. Yeah, what fog? You can't even see the end of your nose. You have trouble on a clear day. (laughs) Well, it comes in handy for cleaning my pipe anyway. I, uh... But, Quentin, I'll always remember how swell you were to me during those bombings. Don't be silly, Bob. We, we always revive anyone who faints in an air raid shelter. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I've been reading about your trip to the South Pacific. How'd you get along with the Australian girls, Bob? Well, Quentin, they speak a different type of English. They can hardly understand you, and you can hardly understand them. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> What's so wonderful about that? Well, when you ask them for a kiss, by the time they look it up in the dictionary, it's too late. Listen, I get tired of talking about myself, Quentin. Let's talk about something uplifting, something of great importance. Yes, Bob, I've read your book. Yeah. <laughs> well, mention the name of it. You say you read my new book, I Never Left Home? Yes, Bob, and I couldn't put it down. You couldn't put it down? No, what a novel idea. Fly paper covers. <laughs> That's catchy, isn't it, huh? <laughs> I didn't know you were a writer, Bob. Yes, people tell me I'm as good as writer as I am a comedian. Well, chin up. <laughs> you know, I've even thought of going into your racket, Quentin. How is it? Well, there's nothing more exciting than being a war correspondent up in the front lines, Bob. It's a great experience. Well, let's show the folks what it's like, Quentin. First, a couple of Yank correspondents at the front. <laughs> Well, we picked out a great spot to watch the battle in this foxhole, Quentin. I'm not afraid of those rats. <laughs> just missed us. Ah, this is just a picnic. Ah, they make me laugh. <laughs> What's the matter, Bob? Look, a spider. Back, Bob. Not me. They can't stop a yank spirit. They can't stop a yank's muscles. They can't stop a yank's fighting heart. <laughs> what happened? They found a place. <laughs> and now, and now the same scene the next day. We find two British correspondents at the front. I say, Ronald, glad things have quieted down a bit, what? <laughs> yes. You know, Reginald, that was a beastly bombing last night. Gad, I jumped out of my skin. I noticed, Ronald. You should have had it pressed before you put it back on. Uh, How about a spot of lunch? A hard-boiled egg? An egg? Yes, I'll just hold it above the top of this foxhole for a minute. Shells it nicely, doesn't it? Shall we brew ourselves some tea? Some tea? Quite, quite, old boy. You have the tea. You have the pot. Uh... Oh, I, I love tea, Reg. Tea in the morning, tea at noon, tea at night. Really, Ronald, all you drink is tea, tea, tea. Oh, yes, I love tea. Was that a shell? No, too much tea. <laughs> Got the deck with an angel. Got me. 
Got a date with an angel down on my way to heaven. So lovely beside me, and whatever betide me, got an angel to guide me. So I'm on my way to heaven. Soon I let the bells ring out, and the choir will sing out. When the pearly gates swing out, oh, she'll beckon to me. I've been waiting a lifetime for the season of seven. Got a date with an angel. I'm on my way to heaven. Sun, with plane and tank and gun, no matter what your job may be, you'll see the battle won, and we thank you so much. Oh, thanks for the memory, two nations filled with pride, fighting side by side, their borders free to you and me, good neighbors now allied, and we thank you so much, folks. Let's each be our own delegation to do what we can for our nation, to keep freedom and not have dictation. By stamps galore, help win this war. I want to thank all you wonderful people here at Camp Borden. You two, Quentin Reynolds, for your guest and guest appearance tonight. It's been a great day here at Camp Borden. You know, folks, when we first went overseas, we met a lot of Canadians. War was new to us then, but already more than two years old of them. For Canada's had five years of this war, five years this month. Boys who were 20 in September 1939 are veterans of 25 today. Canadian youngsters of 15 and 16 were inside the little red schoolhouse in 39, learning their three R's. Tonight they're inside Germany, teaching the Nazis that there is no super race. So it's a privilege for us to be in Canada. Yes, sir, these are the people who've had their full share of blood, toil, tears, and sweat. Their sons stood in the ring at Dunkirk and were slugged. At Dieppe, they took it on the chin, and the folks at home took it in the heart. Canada's first steps in the road to victory were taken in the blackest kind of darkness. But, mister, when the lights go on again all over the world, you can bet there'll be a Canadian helping at the light switch. Good night. Quentin James Reynolds was born in 1902. He was an American author, journalist, and World War II correspondent. He died in 1965 at the age of 62. Please send your questions and comments to host at ClassicComedyOTR.com. And until we meet again, in the words of Yakov Smirnoff, everybody laughs the same in every language because laughter is a universal connection. <laughs>